Mr. Excellency, you are welcome. Shall we all be on our feet in a reference to God as we pray? Lord, we thank you for a day like this. We thank you for granting us the mercy to see today. We thank you for granting the traveling mercy to His Excellency George Ramani Mahama and His Enterat to this place. Lord, I pray and I invite your spirit to take control over the, this memorable meeting and make it a success. Proverbs 29 verse 2 says, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear it rule, the people mourn. The current situation in Ghana now depicts the kind of ruler we have. Lord, I pray that come December 7, 2024, you will give us a righteous ruler for Ghanaians to rejoice once again. We know that the NDC party and His Excellency Jordamani Mahama will give the joy that Ghanaians want at this crucial moment and restore our country to it from our glory. Lord, I commit the beginning of that journey of restoration into your care. Proverbs 12, 7 says, The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. Lord, overthrow every wicked in authority and establish the, right, the house of righteousness in Ghana in Jesus' name. Lord, make this meeting 
a success. Lord, I pray and I invite make this meeting a success and in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. 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 Sumota, Baraku, Mia, and Rizima, Bakla Suba, and Yaka, Dukwala Covena Mia, now what they want to say, Yala Mia, Miasia, Nea Natuase, Ayazu, Ayaza, and they say, I'm a fine, they say, and they say, I'm a fa, you are Panami. Oba yi malota maga do e fugbo avo mi atomi na ba e fugba na mo la suere la un ga ka la ba du pala to ala mi isa enye ali ala bo no to da ma na mala ma na na ma yo 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 esa lese my incoming president 2024 to 2029 uh president john damani mahama the former speaker of parliament Right Honorable Do Ajaho, the Godfather of Voter Politics, the former Chief of Staff, uh, my school father, the Voter Regional Chairman Mauto Agbavito, uh, my former MP Honorable Koshi Ziga, our MP Honorable Abla Jifa Gomashi. Our MP from Katunov. Our MP from Katunov. Honorable Avaji from Katunov. Uh, my hardworking constituency executives. Our former MCs. Our hardworking branch executives. Gaba. Gaba. You meet the ways on Amashama. Agba. Anya Kakato Hereba. Miaho, Mianto, Miafofo, Dupola, President John Damani Mahamara, Katusa. Aba Aba Mianana Aba Mianana Mia Katusafa Miawenda Atoman Constituency Gana Kata 
Alaba nanda ba jiru runava indisisia ka agba anja kaka tokarela mia katu stafto doma. Tana ba president Mahama ada bubu miangu bana ya visit katu safa afya ba akwe dada shiba mia wakwe atengwana ba wava ajijil la twenty twenty four malama na nama. Ta la susumata la susumata aba ni taebe agairo. E wana nyanyo ba ngmata ula bo agairo la daka o magba mi president mama mama koga pata susuma adoni o kata o wana mi afidu bala ova fimi a kujia la mesia wagatro agaira duapa nyaoji malama na nama na miro kujia it is only during his tenure that we have a flower e block uncompleted. It is only his tenure that we have the Blakusu C project ongoing. It is only under his tenure that we see other projects ongoing in the constituency before we lost the 2016 election. It is therefore onerous on us to give him another opportunity, another chance for him to come back to do the unfinished business. Ayazu, 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 it, it is therefore on that note that I will indulge all my constituency executives to come over here, please. All of you can constituency executives, vice chairman, constituency executives. It, it is on that note that on behalf of you, on behalf of the constituency, on behalf of all stakeholders of the NDC in this constituency, we, the constituency executive, we declare our unfriendly support for President John Dramani Mahama. Ayata, Ayata, Ayazu, Yo, Akpa, Ayazu. Man, the mi chami ba mi o dora mi atapa. Kanya mi glory me ju komi awana mi a. Ni akpo mi lere malo anjona mi ato amekwe. Eta mi ba glaba mi a o la mi aman koma mi a mi da jogba ba mi a na ninety nine percent votes. President Mahama la koyama la katu safa ba na ogaba to dukolo. Tambi ta kwana mi ba mi a o nakakli mi. Na President Mahama, na Gato Baba, do a pop on a milo, a pop on a milo, a pop on a milo. A pop, a pop, a pop. Mr. Sigma Gahan on a seven. Okay. A pop. Le man kwa kwa ya ma. Mi a kwa Sigma Gahan on a milo, mi a ba MP. On a bo, a bla, si va, go ma si. Your Excellency, permit me to stand on the existing protocols that the Constituency Secretary has established. Your Excellency, um, do I need to speak? See the love that you have. I am flying on your wings. I am flying on your wings. Oli, Odo, Novio, Endisia, Katwede, John Mohamed, Akpa, Akpa, Akpa Nami, Ma da kuku Nami ba Mado yo vuba vida na Mado vuba ha vida siya. Your Excellency, I've worked with two of the people who want to contest you. Two people who are, are, want to contest you. 
But I want to tell them today that they should not waste their time. Even though I've worked with them, my candidate is here. My candidate is who? John Dramani Mahama. people in the PNDC era but in the NDC I worked under President John Dramani Mahama there's a difference I want Ghana to be saved and the person who will save Ghana is John Dramani Mahama Your Excellency Your Excellency you promised that only in November, when you came for the Godi Bazaar, you said you are going to give us the market, you said you will do our roads, you said you will give us a hospital, and you said you would divide Katusa for us. Your Excellency, in your 2020 manifesto, you indicated that you know that we have a lot of youth. And because of that, you were promoting skills development. Even though you are not in the Flagstaff House, I have started. We are waiting for you to come and finish for us. The skills... Olaza Olazuzu Ogalaza Laka miagwaneha yezolo Um Choboy 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 Cho 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 Choboy Choboy Boy 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 Choboy Mamma, <laughs> Ayesu Yo Nyeyeti Nyako Asigba Nyako Mianto Nyebe Ritina Teman Onaba Mewuto Agavito Ayesu Ayesu Yemele Mianko Samolo Ayesu Akpaito Ayesu Akpaito Ayesu Ela Zuza, Ela Zazazu, Emefa, Mia, 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 Azoni Lengona, Mia, Ba, Mila, Constituency, Ome, Atombo, Bouyge, Tamia, Nomia, Bodidio, Dokome, Polo, Mia, Fo, former president, Untu Vidya, Jede Kade, Beno, Ava, Ponunami, Enye, Nyanya, Kwenyebe, Enye, Nto, Venye, Mauto, Agba, Vitoa, Mele, former president, Yome, Gong, 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 Go join your voter region, la. Me and I'm your performer, president. Ninety-eight point seven percent. Milodajia, Milodajia. Akwe ta na mi adonkwe mola. Me di ben ya delegate so kata na mi akwe demiyo. 
Honorable Constituency Chairman, uh, Right Honorable Former Speaker, Regional Chairman, our hardworking Member of Parliament, Abla Jifa Gomashi, the convener of the John Mahama campaign, Honorable Professor Joshua Labi, all constituency executives, all branch executives, I want to thank you very much for this warm welcome you've given us. What I've seen this morning alone tells me that the reason I came here has been taken care of already. Everybody in Ghana knows K2 South. And they know that it is the heart of the NDC. And that is why any time it's time for elections, they come up with some Western Togoland matters, and then they bring soldiers here to come and intimidate our people. But we are never intimidated. When the election results come, K2 South, as usual, is up there. This morning, we are not going to keep you for a long time. The reason I came is just to come and pay my respects to you and thank you for the last primaries we held in 2019. In KD South, you gave me 
98 point something percent of the results. And because of your 98 point something percent overall, I got 95.3 percent in that primary. And so I came to say thank you for that one. And also to thank you for the support you gave me during the presidential election. And to tell you that the time has come again for us to rise up. And this time, it is more critical than ever before. Our country today is in crisis. Our country today is broke. We are bankrupt. A gamelio. It is the first time in our history that our economy has been in such a mess that we can't pay our debtors, uh, we can't pay our creditors, we can't pay our pensioners. Today, it's not only the foreign loans we can't pay, even the domestic debts that we borrowed from our own citizens, from our own banks, our own pensioners. We can't pay them. And so if your bond was maturing today, they will take that your money and replace it with 12 bonds, which will mature by 2035. Are you God? Do you know how long a person will live? Somebody is 70 years old. You say you wait for his money till 2035. But that is where we've come to. And it's a pity, because it shouldn't have happened like this. Your government, the NDC government, in 2016, we were managing this country efficiently. During the period I was president, we borrowed 54 billion CDs. And yet you can see the evidence of what we use the money for. Community day schools, hospitals, roads, electricity, water, airports, harbors, we use the money productively. Today, when we left office, the total debt was 120 billion. That is from time immemorial till I left office, 120 billion. Today, the debt is almost 600 billion. That's an addition of more than 400 billion cities. And yet, there's nothing to show for it. Show me in a flower here, K2 South, what has happened over the last six years. What development have you seen over the last six years? Nothing. And that is why Ghanaians are looking up to us to rescue them from the mess in which these people have put us. Ghanaians are looking up to the NDC. And if we are to rescue Ghanaians from this ditch into which we have been put, then we need somebody with experience. We need somebody who has done it before. We need experience, not experiment. We need experience, not experiment. We need experience, not experiment. This is not the time for Togbi Midonko. Togbi Donko. This is not the time. I was telling, I was telling Akachi yesterday. I said, we need a president at this time who will hit the ground running and start working on January 7th, 2025. We have a tradition where when you are newly elected as president, they take you to the Flagstaff House and they go and show you your office and show you the chief of staff's office and show you the cabinet office and show you the conference uh, room. I said, me, who will show me Flagstaff House? I know Flagstaff House already.
I know my office already. So from Independence Square, when you all come to Independence Square and we finish the swearing in, I'm going straight to Flagstaff House to start working for you. We did, we did a launch. We did a launch in Ho two days ago. And at the launch, I talked about the disparity between what they call Article 71 office holders and the rest of the public and civil service. We have two kinds of, we have two kinds of public servants. We have the normal public and civil servants who are under the wages, fair wages and salaries commission. And then we have what they call Article 71 office holders. These include justices of the courts, members of parliament, and members of the executives, ministers, presidential staffers, and so on and so forth. There's something they call ex gratia. Some years back, it was cancelled for the rest of workers. They don't take any, they are not given any ex gratia. But somehow, ex gratia continues to be paid to this small segment of people, Article 71. And so we said the disparity is not fair. And so I said categorically that when we come into office, we will cancel ex gratia for the executives because the president is in charge of the executives. So he can cancel it for the executives. But then you have to persuade the other arms of government to see that there is no fairness in continuing to pay yourselves ex gratia when the ordinary worker does not receive it because you are the leaders. You must show by example, if the economy is in crisis, why should we continue to take ex gratia when the rest of the public and civil service don't take it? And so I said categorically that we will cancel ex gratia. And then somebody who should know better, a lawyer, he said, oh, then I should refund all the ex gratia we took before to show Ghanaians that yes, we are serious about canceling it. He does not even know the principle in our constitution that says that you cannot pass retroactive legislation. If you pass legislation today, it does not affect what happened in the past. And what he says is a bit silly because it's like saying that because we've introduced free SHS, all of us should go and get a refund of our school fees that we paid in the past. That is how silly <laughs> what he's saying is. <laughs> and so they should they should state what their position is. Are they in favor of S. Gracia or they agree with us that we'll cancel it? We are saying 2025, when we come, we will cancel X Gracia. But now let me talk about ourselves. You, the branch executives, this election depends on you. The rescue Ghanaians want is dependent on you. It is you who will win the election for us, not us winning it for you. Because elections are won or lost at the polling station. If you elect me flag bearer, I will go, I will mobilize resources. I'll bring those resources for you to work. I'll go and campaign for the party. I will talk for the party. I'll persuade people to join the party. But on the D-Day, there are 40,000 polling stations. I cannot be in those 40,000 polling stations. Who are going to be in those 40,000 polling stations? It is you, the branch executives. And that is why I say you will win the election for us. Because depending on how vigilant you are at your polling station branch, it will guarantee success for us in the election. And you know already, our people like to dribble. This 2024 election, we must open our two eyes like eagle's eyes and make sure that the right thing is done at the polling station. We must monitor the collation every step of the way and make sure that as soon as the election is over, we take our pink sheets and send it to the party office so that they can tally our results. We must get to know our results before the NPP. We must get to know our results before the Electoral Commission. 
so that when any hunu hunu starts coming in, we'll say, hey, my friend, stop. So it will all depend on you and the work that you do. So we'll give you the resources. And I've been begging the constituency executives and the MPs and all of them. When those resources come, make sure that they go to the branches. They say I should, they say I should borrow you. <laughs> when those resources come, make sure they go to the branches. <laughs> because over the years, over the years, we bring bicycles, we bring motorcycles, we bring vehicles. And you'll be surprised that over two or three elections, one person has three motorcycles. And so, and so, it is the branches where the campaign will take place. Because I was telling the chairman in Akatsi, I said, you, everybody knows you. Even our chairman here. Chairman Deka. Wherever you go, chairman Deka. Chairman one, chairman one. <laughs> and you, you can sew a nice, beautiful NDC shirt. I mean, look how beautiful he's looking. So chairman, he doesn't need a t-shirt. And so when the t-shirts come, he will send them to you. So that you can wear the t-shirt in your community. And then you walk with pride and let everybody know that you are an NDC executive. When the motorcycles come, let them go to the branches. Because that's where they need them. They need the motorcycles to ride into the bush and go and convince the people. So we'll mobilize resources. Like I've said, we're in opposition, and so we might not have a, a, the kind of resources that we think we should have. But I'm assuring you that there are many people, people's businesses, are collapsing. People's employ uh, 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 source of income is collapsing. And so everywhere I go, I get that assurance from businessmen, from people who are resourceful. They say, look, we want this NPP government out of office. And so whatever we can mobilize, we will mobilize and help you to get them out of office. And they showed good faith because we held our Congress just at the end of last year. And the Congress cost millions of CDs. It is these same people who came and volunteered 50,000, 500,000, 1 million CDs, 100,000, 200,000. That's how come we were able to hold our Congress last uh, December. And so I know they will come through for us. They'll give us bicycles, they'll give us motorcycles, they'll give us t-shirts, they'll give us posters, they'll give us calendars. And when those things come, please let them go to the branches. And when we come into office, let us be proactive because government of the NDC, we're going to initiate several programs. 
and we want all of you our grassroots to come along with us to be involved in those programs if it's agriculture you must be involved if it's skills training you must be involved if it's education you must be involved whatever our government brings you must get your fair share If it's not you even, it can be your child. If you are too old to undertake whatever program it is, present your child to be trained. And finally, on May 13th, we are holding not only the presidential primary, we are also holding the parliamentary primary. And we have to choose both our flag bearer and who will be our parliamentary candidate. <laughs> I haven't said anything. <laughs> I haven't said anything. I just said on that same day, you also have to choose your parliamentary candidate. Okay, so what I was going to say is that it is a family contest. And so let us make it a clean and decent contest. And that whoever is elected, all of us must rally around the person. You people, I can see you made your mind up already. They say, when a blind man says you throw a stone at you, it means he's stepping on a stone. He's not now going to find a stone. Anyway, so I thank you very much. Let us not disappoint Ghana. Because the crisis in which this country is, it needs a steady hand to bring it back on track. And Never again should we allow one president and his family to destroy our country the way they have done. And the, the sad thing is, they won't keep quiet. When you're talking, they just come and justify it and say it's COVID-19. COVID-19, yes, COVID-19 affected the whole world. But in Ghana, we got a windfall. The Auditor General's report shows that we got 21 billion cities for COVID-19. And yet, the money was dissipated. It was just spent recklessly. If you read the Auditor General's report, you will weep for Ghana. The money was just misused. Then they said, no, it was Ukraine-Russia war. Ukraine-Russia war from where? Lafika. Ukraine-Russia war, Lafika. You know? So they said COVID-19 or Ukraine-Russia war. Alakpa. And ask Jifa, from 2019, in Parliament, any time they brought their budget, our parliamentarians warned this finance minister. He says, look, you're borrowing too much. The rate at which you're borrowing, you're going to drive Ghana's economy into a ditch. He didn't mind. Even I raised the red flag. I said, look, you are borrowing too much. And apart from that, you are using creative accounting. You are not presenting the right figures. You are hiding a lot of things. He didn't mind. Today, he's driven us into a ditch. And because he's the president's cousin, nobody can touch him. 80 of the MPs signed the petition to the president and said, remove your cousin from the finance ministry and appoint a new person. It won't happen. 
And so he is still there. After destroying the economy, he is the one now taking our pensioners' money and our people's money. Meanwhile, his company, his bank, was benefiting because they were advisors for the loans. So anytime Ghana borrows a loan, goes for a loan, his bank gets money. I mean, how can we sit as a people and let this happen? And yet, we have important people. We have traditional rulers. We have religious leaders. We have civil society organizations. And everybody was quiet. When we were talking, they thought it was the usual NDC MPP, NDC MPP. But we are talking because we cared about our country and we knew that this is where it was going to end. Today, he's still in office. And nobody can do anything. The minority tried to move a motion of censure. They sabotaged it. They walked out of parliament. But God is a good God. All this will end on January 7th, 2025. The people of Ghana will wake up to a new dawn where things will be done right, where good governance will come back, where accountability will come back. Hey!